The CV9120 is a prototype light tank that has been in continuous development since its debut at the Eurosatory Defense Exhibition in Paris in the summer of 1998. Attempts to mount higher calibrated guns on the CV90, on the other hand, can be traced back to 1993, when Hoglands collaborated with GIAT to create the CV9105 TML, which was outfitted with a GIAT Industries TML105 turret. The CV9120 was most likely developed by Hoglands AB and continued after Alvis Limited purchased the company in 1997. BAE Systems purchased Alvis Limited in 2004, including Hoglands, and development continued. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks, from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced MBTs at present. So stay with us till the end of this video, so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future, and let's dive in. BAE Systems Hoglands developed the CV9120T light tank as a private venture. The primary goal was to match the firepower of modern main battle tanks while providing greater tactical and strategic mobility. The CV9120T's first prototype was completed in 1998. This light tank was finally completed in 2001 after extensive trials. Despite this, advancements in a variety of fields, particularly electronics, continued. The CV9120T is actively being proposed to potential customers all over the world, but no production orders have been placed on this light tank as of 2014. The CV9120 was created to give Sweden the option of equipping a lighter vehicle with the firepower of a main battle tank, equivalent to the Leopard 2 SDRV122s. Northern Sweden has few roads and difficult terrain in both summer and winter, and the CV90 was built with these conditions in mind. This paved the way for the CV9120 to join the CV90 family, combining extreme mobility with extreme firepower at the expense of relatively light armor. The CV9120's initial prototype featured a brand new welded turret designed to accommodate a large caliber tank gun. Externally, the chassis was identical to a standard CV90, with the same engine, suspension and interior layout. It was, however, modified to accommodate the added weight of a larger turret carrying a large caliber gun. The prototype vehicle weighed approximately 20 tons. The vehicle itself has gone through several iterations between 1998 and 2011. These are classified into three major types, the CV9120 prototype, the CV9120T marketed vehicle, and later, more complex variants such as the CV9120 Ghost. The CV9120 prototype weighed only 20 tons when empty, making it extremely light for its firepower. The low mass presented several difficulties. The most notable was making such a light vehicle stable enough to withstand the forces generated by firing a powerful gun. The origins of the 120mm gun can be traced back to Switzerland, as a development made possible by the use of stronger steel. As the recoil energy is transferred to the chassis, this poses a design challenge for the vehicle. The driver sits in the lower left front of the chassis next to the engine. The turret's crew consists of three people, a gunner, a commander, and a loader. The vehicle's rear, which was originally used to transport soldiers, has been converted into ammunition storage. The CTG-120L50 smoothbore, a lightweight gun developed by Ruag Land Systems, was chosen. It was light enough not to impair vehicle mobility and had a low enough recoil force to avoid causing damage to the vehicle itself. It included a muzzle brake and a bore evacuator. The gun was built to accept all current and future NATO 120mm ammunition, which was thought to be more than enough to combat threats at the time. The elevation depression of the vehicle ranged from minus 8 degrees to plus 22 degrees. When using the German-developed DM33 APFSDS shell, the muzzle velocity was 1680 meters per second. The prototype lacked lighter weapons such as machine guns. The vehicle is designed with a steel hull that is minimally armored to accommodate externally mounted modular armor. The materials used in these armors packs ranges from composites to high hardness steel. The vehicle was designed with externally mounted applique and armor packs after testing revealed that add-on armor provided better protection per kilo than armor steel. The thickness of the base armor, on the other hand, is unknown. There is no additional information available about the protection provided by the add-on armor packages. The vehicle commander had access to a prototype of the Saab Lemur panoramic sight, which has gone through several iterations over the years. It enabled the vehicle commander to use laser range finding and to operate in a hunter-killer mode. The Lemur could also function as a remote weapon station, arming the vehicle with a machine gun. 
The optics of this lemur commander have appeared in numerous variations over the course of its many years of development, in various modular compositions and technology levels as development progressed. It was seen on the first prototype as well as the updated CV9120T. The gunner sight provides magnification ranging from times 3 to times 10. The driver's field of vision is nearly 180 degrees. The CV9120's engine was a Scania DI16800 horsepower diesel engine, giving the vehicle a top speed of 70 km per hour on roads and 40 km per hour in reverse. Despite its reinforced chassis and newly designed turret, it was designed with mobility in mind. The engine was placed in the front right of the hull and will also serve as protection in the event of a frontal attack, similar to the Israeli Merkava design. If necessary, the engine can be upgraded to meet higher horsepower demands, demonstrating modularity similar to other aspects of the vehicle. The Allison Perkins X305 automatic gearbox with four forward and two reverse gears was chosen. The running gear consists of seven paired road wheels per side, as well as a forward sprocket wheel and a rear idler wheel. Steel tracks with rubber pads were used. Torsion bar suspension with rotary dampers and no return rollers. On a full tank, the vehicle's range was 600 kilometers. It has a fording length of 1.5 meters and can cross slopes with a 60% gradient. All of these features were developed in response to the obstacles of the Scandinavian peninsula, where a vehicle may have to travel from snowy mountains to muddy wet forests, as the northern terrain varies greatly and infrastructure is generally underdeveloped in large areas. The prototype also served as a test bed for a variety of passive protection systems, including a water vapor dispensing system to remove any thermal signature from the vehicle's exterior. By 2001, the vehicle had completed its initial development cycle and had progressed beyond the prototype stage. After BAE Systems purchased Alvis Limited in 2004, the vehicle's development became even more ambitious, with the vastly modernized CV9120T being revealed to the international military market in 2007. The CV9120T was another development cycle for the CV9120 that focused on the internals and alternative protection systems that replaced the need to put it on external armor to counter threats. This was distinguished by a strong emphasis on electronics and definable soft-kill defense systems. The vehicle's electronic systems were far more advanced. These systems are sometimes referred to as soft-kill because they affect a crew's ability to prevent the loss of the vehicle by warning the crew before a shot is fired. Among these enhancements to quality of life, a large sensory system covering the vehicle's turret accounts for the majority of its electronic early warning system. These sensors can detect lasers from hostile laser range finders, as well as missiles heading in the direction of the vehicle. The vehicle also has a top attack radar that detects high angle munitions that could endanger the vehicle. In addition, the vehicle has an advanced battle management system for modern battlefield situations. Internally, the vehicle has also been improved, with the most recent modularity and customization available to potential customers. From 1998 to the present, the CV9120T could be equipped with various CV90 chassis. This means that while the prototype's weight was initially 20 tons, the chassis and its internals improved with each generation developed by Hoglands. The vehicle can now reach weights of 40 tons without affecting mobility. Externally, little has changed. The CV9120T received a new type of bore evacuator for its 120mm CTG L50 and the prototype had smoke launchers mounted externally. When the smoke launchers were incorporated into the sides of the turret bustle, they were removed, allowing for less external clutter while improving external and internal space utilization efficiency. Multispectral aerosol grenades were used in these smoke launchers. The commander's optics were also altered. The panoramic low signature sight was an entirely new development from Saab with the unique feature of not changing its silhouette while being operated due to its spherical profile. The PLSS provided complex optics and expanded the vehicle commander's capabilities by providing a hunter-killer option, effectively allowing him to slave the gun to his optics. The CV9120T could also use later versions of the Lemur remote weapon station instead of Saab's PLSS. Later, CV9120T variants received the latest BAE rubber tracks to reduce overall vehicle weight. And that's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. 
You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.